Hey Go fans, I'm bringing you several positions from a game I just played and reviewed it a little bit with the robot. And this is a game that's kind of all about pushing. Furthermore, it's a really simple game. Like, at least for the whole opening and into the mid game, it's really simple. So I think it's actually really good at exemplifying some of these concepts and when you should push from behind and when you shouldn't. So that's my hope for today. Let's just keep pushing. Uh, I am black in this game, and the first position that we get to is here. And this is not a, a weird position. Like, I think we're playing fairly normal-ish kind of Josek. He actually misclicked, and I actually played a Taisha variation here, but my opponent didn't play Taisha, so we uh, kind of reverted to a... Uh, I don't know, the robots don't even like to play the Taisha variations anyway, so... Just a fairly even exchange. Uh, opponent takes territory, I get outside influence. And <clears throat> the first question I have for you all is, where should black play? And that's not the easiest thing, but we can, you know, we can take a second to evaluate. Um, black has a little group down here on the bottom left. Uh, we don't have a ladder right now, so this cut could be a thing. You know, white, white can continue to harass it. But again, for right now, it's totally safe. Um, right and left corner sort of in balance. Um, white has some territory going and maybe some development going on the left. And so uh, I think a lot of you, you see this move and you instinctively want to play here. And this is wrong. <laughs> There's actually much better that black can do. Uh, the move I played in the game uh, was over here, thinking I'm going to extend from this thickness, right, and I'm going to start developing an area. Uh, this is an okay move, this is certainly a candidate, uh, but we're not, we shouldn't be done here yet. So, a couple options. Uh, not the best option, but first option is actually to extend here. And the reason why this push is okay is because this influence is actually getting reduced. It looks like we're helping white build more territory, but you can imagine a scenario for where if we just keep pushing, this territory becomes very low. And this is, again, this isn't the correct answer. I'm just trying to exemplify that by pushing, we're getting more thickness, and we're really not giving white that many more points because white has invested these two stones. And now these two stones really aren't worth much. So it's like white played these two, so we got this, this extra territory here. And we played this, so white got this extra territory, this territory, and this territory kind of cancel out. Who has the better influence in the center? It's black. And so that's why, you know, when all is said and done, black is in a good position here. But uh, the move that you need to find here is this one. And, you know, it's such an obvious move. It's a Q move, right? But it was totally off my list um, when I was immediately looking at this, I sort of looked at this position and went, well, I'm more worried about this Atari, and I don't know how I'm going to respond to that, so let me let me decide what I'm going to do on the right and how, how much I want to commit to building something on the top first. But this move is beautiful, because now this is the follow-up. Black double Hanes here. And, oh man, if you start just, just reading this out at all, um, if white cuts, if this is what you're worried about, this is not a thing. <laughs> uh, because this ladder works for black. And if black can basically trap white into the small territory here, this is garbage. This is now worthless. And so this combination, this push in combination with this double Hane is really nice. Um, in the game, I, of course, looked at this and I was like, oh, that's not very good. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this, this, I didn't, I didn't quite read it out all the way. I wasn't brave enough. <laughs> and of course, white can't play here because then these die. So... Uh, robot says push is best, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, tr -tr 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 let's see, in the game, here I can actually, I should actually show the robot here. There you go, robot's thinking, yeah. Robot says this, I'll turn off the annoying variations. <laughs> uh, it's pretty close. Definitely likes pushing to force the sequence a little bit more, not give white a way out. If you play here directly, uh, let's see says white will actually peep first. Oh, and black still should play there, but if white if answers the peep, oh, then it says this is okay. Huh. Cool. So, interesting exchange. <laughs> In this case, you get white to commit to this rather than just make a, a group cleanly. Okay. Let's turn that off. Go back to our game. And so over here we play a pretty normal Joseki-ish now, you know, very modern AI-influenced Joseki. And at this point, 
uh, Black has this other question, what should Black do? And it's, it's clear we've got a little bit here, so turning here is pretty big. Or sorry, it's actually White's move. Let's play one more move for White, because White's, yeah, this, sorry, White's going to take this Atari, and now the question is, what should Black do? And I just sort of decided that, in my head, that I wasn't really going to respond to this Atari directly. Uh, this is very painful uh, in terms of shape. Black plays here. White will want to peep again. Black plays here. Black shape is real dumb looking. <laughs> like it's a wall, but what is it doing? Um, white has sort of forced black a, like a low, like half low. Like we don't know who's getting the next move. So if white gets the next move, then this will continue to be low. If black gets the next move, uh, then black can actually build something, but it's like 50-50. So again, white is incentivized to push this way now. Um, so, you know, if white played this, my thinking, and I believe what I played in the game was here. And if white takes, you know, that's fine. I'm just going to keep building this wall um, and, you know, build something on a, on a larger scale than before. That was the reasoning in the game. The robot kind of agrees with me. Uh, at least, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> uh, the robot still says connecting. Oh, I hate that variation. I have to keep turning off. It actually is just still best to connect. Um, Pushing here, really not that bad. Like, second best move. So, it's good enough. <laughs> Alright. Uh, if we go forward in the game... Man, I hate that. Every time I uh, uh, turn the variations on and off, it turns... Or, if I turn toggle the the robot points, it turns the variations on too, and it blows up the whole screen with variations. So, in the game I played here, um, white did extend, and uh, this gave me a... Or, gave me a chance to now come back and, and fix this. Though at this point, after making this exchange, again, uh, if you look, if you spotted that robot, the robot actually liked playing over here now, right? And saying, yes, of course. Now, if you build that uh, for white in the corner, black will build this sort of in the center top area. And there's actually starting to be a little more pressure put on this group. This group is still safe, but um, you can see it's it has the potential to be harassed now. All right, so in the game, I connected, and my opponent got to push here, right? And so this push is good. Like, like I don't, I don't think this is a, a bad move, um, but the robot says you got to use the Aji first, and this this peep is just sort of obvious. If you're if you're even, you know, a single digit Q player, it's sort of glaring out to you uh, to play it. This is the B two bomber shape, because it looks like a B two stealth bomber. <laughs> Uh, as we like to call it, the <laughs> uh, it's not good shape. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It's very inefficient use of stones. But, you know, black still has a wall, and it feels like white's really low, and again, this wall extension here really doesn't have a whole lot to develop. All right, we'll go back here. Um, it does have all these types of moves as candidates, so they're all playable, but you can see that white actually, even though white, you know, kind of got this Atari for free and, got, and, and extended here, the robot already likes black, and it's not like black has a lot of points, but it's just that white has almost no more potential on this board. All of white's points are settled. Um, white has this group over here, which still has some weaknesses. As you can see with these candidates, it's trying to fix. Um, there's not a lot here. Again, this is a solid 20 points. Like, white's got 20 points, but then what else? Comey? <laughs> not much else. Meanwhile, uh, black actually has a very large potential here for 20, 30, 40 points if black gets the next move. So... Um, robot really wants to take care of it. Okay, I think we did it. Um, so this push here is okay. Uh, but this is, there's a proverb. Uh, you shouldn't push from behind. <laughs> and in this case, even though it's good, it's still, black Black is not unhappy. Because uh, black can double Hane here. And this double Hane is good. Um, it still leaves a defect. Like, obviously, with the anytime you double honey, you're going to leave defects behind. But um, in combination with this defect and this defect, white actually has some emergency play in this area. So it's not over. But man, is this threatening a pretty large chunk of territory. This is three, four, five, six, seven ish, 20. You can see if you, if you count out here to the fourth line, and this, we're over 30 points um, of potential here for black. And that's. That's enough to win the game on its own at this stage, right? If everything else cancels out, then, you know, one giant 30-point territory is is putting white in kind of a bind. Um, white double honeys here. Uh, 
The best move for black is to actually play this and then connect. And this stone is actually kind of a nuisance. Uh, it's it's unfortunate. I, I thought of it, I meant to play it like as soon as I connected, I was like, oh, I'm just going to connect. And that way I can take Sente. But in the end, uh, the when white connects here, this shape is actually too strong now. This is actually very nicely spaced and, and much harder to attack. Whereas... If I had just made this exchange and then connected, well, what do you, is, if, white, is, if white's going to extend this way, I'm going to build my territory. And these two stones are very uncomfortable. It still feels like white owes me a move. And so this is just kind of like a quick little sente taking technique. Um, often after a double Hane sequence, you play this one Atari and then leave it and forget about it. Um, and obviously, yeah, this is crazy talk. <laughs> if white tries something like this, um, oh man, I don't, I don't even know what the best sequence is, but black can easily live in the corner, and sure, maybe white gets a group over here, but I guess black, white should really, uh, play this first. <laughs> Actually, probably this peep is best. Uh, something like this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is, this is <laughs> just a crazy fight. Okay, anyway. Sorry, I get distracted real easily <laughs> playing going, going in these fantasy lanes. The real point I'm trying to make, the real lesson, just leave the Aji, right? Don't leave the Aji. So this is a slight minus for me. I had a better variation. All right, this move. Obviously, I played here. This is not the best move. There's actually a better move. Uh, maybe several, actually several better moves than this one, at least according to the robot. Uh, the reason for me playing this move is I'm like, okay, well, I just gave white some strength here. I just got some profit, or at least some potential profit. It's getting it's getting closer by the day, <laughs> by the minute. Uh, let me play a move that both diminishes the effects of white's influence and continues to threaten to make more uh, potential and, pro and or profit for me. And this move looks very nice to do that. This wall is facing down here. It really wants to expand on a grand scale. The furthest it can go is here, but this is also very reducible. <laughs> and meanwhile, if black gets another move, you can see how quickly this bottom right-hand corner can kind of explode into some sort of much larger potential. Okay. This is not the best move. So think about this position and try to figure out <laughs> what a better move would be. <laughs> and I'll give you some very limited seconds to think about it. I know a lot of you are instinctually wanting to make more territory here. This actually isn't the best. Yes, white can reduce, whoops, play here. White can reduce this territory. It's not, it's not really a real problem. If we actually get to play another move in here, it actually kind of helps solve these little defects. Um, white can attempt more dangerous things. Uh, this is still over 20 points, as is. And is it really worth one stone? to solidify black's 20 points, it's a hard it's a hard case to make for white. Black's not unhappy. Uh, again, it's going to have to do with this group over here, how this is managed. And here, let's see what the robot says. The robot says, uh, turn the variations off. This push is still best on this board. And the move I played, it says 71%. Didn't really read a whole lot of variations, though. Let's turn that back on, see if we can get it to at least think a little bit more about it. Really likes this push here, because its real plan is to keep pushing out this wall. Uh, this area right here is easy points for white, but it's also easy for black to reduce. And this is how it wants black to reduce. Just expose these defects. Not even take this cut right away. Just push. And again, uh, for for white to play again over here, this is probably the most reasonable move. Black just keeps pushing and keeps threatening to use this Aji. Um, for instance, let's say white plays here. And then let's say white, I don't know, refuses to use this Aji. Well, here it is. And it looks like that. And you can see how quickly this wall isn't just a wall anymore. It actually surrounds the white group. Um, because of these defects, black actually has a little bit of initiative. And white really can't stop push or pushing along with black. So black, it's like it, even though black's pushing from behind, uh, those pushes are very threatening. Because uh, now this three-stone white group is under pretty severe attack. 
Uh, and if we get out crudely, you can see white sort of has to push from behind, and that means that it's black who's going to get the initiative now at the bottom. Look at all this. This is just developing so beautifully, so naturally. Love it. Easy territory. Okay, so again, the robot wants us to go back to pushing, <laughs> but starting with this cut. Uh, in the game later, or very soon actually, we play this variation out. Um, after I play here, this move is a little bit dubious. Um, the robot definitely wants white to come back over here. Uh, this gives black quite nice shape. Uh, this is a very nice corner position, and white's still under attack. And so at this moment, I should just keep pushing. I should just keep doing this, either this or this. And they're pretty actually equivalent in, in the robot's eyes. But I do something different. Uh, I was like, you know, this is a little bit suspect, and my group could use a little bit more help. So let's play here <laughs> and, and just play in between them. And now, now this group, we can attack it. And this, this stone helps our stones. However, this is really poor shape. Uh, because when white plays here, I have to fix it again. White can now push and lean on this group. And I have two ways to fix it that are worth considering this way and this way. This way is the way I chose. Of course, it's the wrong answer. I should play this because this leaves less corner Aji for, for my opponent. Um, but I thought this move was a, was a little bit more useful for white. Um, because it... it I don't know. I just cared a lot more about the center of the board than I think I should have at this point. Um, so anyway, this move is a mistake. I should just keep pushing or uh, threat, uh, cut and then threaten to keep pushing in here. Um, again, if black gets a wall through here and there's only 20 points of territory, uh, this is not a small corner. This is over a 15-point corner now. This is not not huge, but let's we could we could expect to get almost 10 points. So I've got 25 points just here and here, plus it's looking like another 20 here. So if I have 25 plus 20, 45, how is white going to find 45 points here? It looks real hard. It looks real hard. Uh, and in fact, uh, let's see, it, it does, it, it's showing, and before I play this move, black has about a 10 point lead if we're counting. Okay, so I make this mistake. Um, white jumps out. This is also a mistake. This is actually a little bit too defensive. White doesn't need to worry so much about this. Again, especially if... Uh, let's look at the robot. Yeah, the robot just wants this turn. Again, this push is so big, it basically makes sure that this is something substantial enough in terms of points. Uh, it also prevents black from making anything really large here. Do notice that, um, you know, the further this wall goes out, Perhaps the you know black black can still make more points even though even though I'm saying I'm I'm totally satisfied with twenty to thirty points here, this could turn into thirty to fifty points if black were to keep pushing and then come out this way. So we have to be a little bit careful. All right, uh, let's turn that off. So in this case, I make this mistake. White jumps out, uh, and then here. I, I play a pretty good move, which is to push. I finally push again. And so black is actually, this is going very well. Uh, again, this area is going to be very limited. White plays, and then I play this move. This move is a mistake. The idea I had was like, I don't, I don't really want to just take an extension. This doesn't feel like it's sente enough. Um, what I want to do is I want to create a little bit of traction, I guess, here. Uh, my opponent played here, and then I played here. And in my mind, this was more threatening, right? It's 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 really making white want to take this stone, because if white doesn't, and this runs out, oh man, my right hand position got really quite sizable. Now we're approaching 25 points. It's also completely limiting white's potential for anything in the center. This is all real strong. And this corner is still open. Black can still just take it. So... You know, if white gets in here later or does something, this is this is not white points. There's no, there's very few points here for white. Um, so this was, I don't know. I, th I, I think this was kind of a trick move, <laughs> but my opponent took it, and so it kind of worked out. And so at this point in the game, uh, it's a 85 percent win percentage for black. <laughs> uh, after this, this does give me the opportunity to make this exchange down here. Actually, it's more than an exchange, uh, but then. I do come back to make this honey and continue to grow this. And at this point, you know, it's it's actually, the robot says it's an eight-point game for black. Uh, even though my opponent resigned, I kind of played it out to the end, and, um, 
He's, he resigned much later. Uh, it ended up being an eight-point win for Black uh, on the nose if you played out all the, the correct end game. So, I mean, we're all, it's pretty smart, apparently. Oh, no, we're down to 7.7. 7. Oh, I made up 0. 0.3 of a point before between now and the end game, apparently. Uh, of course, there was there was uh, a giant mid-game fight that had ended up happening here, and, um, you know, in the end, it was kind of a wash, but it uh, was quite exciting. Um, there's actually, and here's the thing, in this game, there's actually still a cutting sequence over here. This push cut uh, eventually meant that I got to take the corner. I, I got some stones in here. I got to Hane around here, and um, my opponent had to give up the corner back in order to, to keep all this connected. Uh, so this, this push cut was very valuable. Of course, as Go players, we're all taught, don't short yourself liberties if you don't have to, if, you don't, if you're not going to force a sequence right then. This stick uh, doesn't have infinite liberties. <laughs> so if I were to play a move right now, like this, well, now that might have been an important liberty if, you know, let's say I want to go do something else, if my opponent cuts, right? That liberty might have made a very big difference in terms of the health of this group. So, anyway, uh, to recap our theme of the day, this whole pushing from behind thing, we have two areas of the board where black and white are both pushing, and uh, what's interesting is we're we're pushing into each other, right? We like I want I want to I want to sh make sure you guys can see what I'm seeing when I see this go board, right? I'm seeing this wall here, and I'm seeing a white wall here, and that becoming white territory. And then again over here, black is seeing a black wall here, and this black wall here, and this becoming black territory. So white wants to push into my potential while building strength, and I want to push into white's potential while building strength. Uh, of course, given the spacing that already exists on this board, this is a more successful strategy for black than it is for white, uh, which was very much to my benefit, and I appreciated my opponent going along with. Uh, but that's it's it's just a game of pushing. We, this is what kept it so simple. Like there was no really violent fight because no one really dived into uh, these walls. We we kind of respected each other's power and influence, but. Uh, you know, we, we played very solid for the most part, at least in this opening. These are all very solid groups. And this was a game just about pushing, right? I push into white, he pushes into me. You know, it's a it's a tit-for-tat kind of relationship. The bigger I grew over here, the more white wants to push over here. But again, like I said, this is a much better deal for black than it is for white, in part because black can already get out to the fourth or fifth line. And white is pretty much forced to stay on the third line because of these cuts that white has committed himself to. So, anyway, uh, <clears throat> yeah, even, again, over here, this racing this potential isn't as big as just continuing that pushing game. So, <clears throat> both these positions, both for white and for black, we both played good moves, and they're, but they're both pushing from behind. If you just blindly followed the proverbs, which say, don't push from behind, uh, we would have played even more bad moves. Like, in general, we played pretty well, at least according to the robot. We missed some opportunities. Like, most of our moves were in the top, you know, candidates. Uh... And somehow, even though the robot agreed with it, it kept it a fairly simple game. Uh, because we're pushing you know, into our opponent's potential like this, the pushing, and, and there's enough defects to make it worth it, particularly for black, pushing from behind is okay. So, you know, just keep pushing. Hope, hope this lesson gave you some inspiration. Uh, and was, and I, I really liked showing this game because it was so simple, uh, at, least, at least through this early mid-game. And uh, hope you I hope I inspire you to go, go you know, build some big walls and push into your opponent's moyos and ruin their influence while building your own. That's, that's what goes all about. All right, thanks. We'll see you next time.